So, Sonic Rangers is supposed to be the first ever fully open world Sonic game. And many people are very perplexed as to how a Sonic game can even work in open world. You'd honestly go ahead and think that someone as fast as Sonic with an open world game is honestly contradictory of each other. Because a lot of open worlds are meant to be gone on leisurely strolls and able to be explored at your own pace and all things like that. And that's what most people think of open worlds because some of the best open worlds have that design philosophy. Um, so if if you are somebody who considers yourself not really wanting an open world Sonic game and you just want, say, an even better adventure game or an even better uh, boost game or something like that, if you overall find yourself not really having high hopes for an open world Sonic game, then this video is honestly for you. It took a bit of time and talking with some other people um, that I've come up with, I think, the perfect recipe for an open world Sonic game. At the end of this video, even if it's not something you'd prefer, I want to convince every single person watching this that it can work as long as it's done in this similar way. Sega doesn't have to do exactly what I say here, but I really truly think that following these specific design philosophies, it can work and it can excel. So strap yourselves in you beautiful people, I've got a doozy for you. So when creating an open world game, the first step when designing the game, it should be how a character interacts with this world. And in order to do so, you have to first consider what this character is actually able to do. Sonic needs to be considered first when designing this game. Make his moveset and then determine how he interacts with the world itself and what's within it, which obviously includes enemies too. Consider his speed, how fast it lets him go, how he achieves said speed, and what he can do with it. But most importantly, what would make those mechanics ruin the game? Sonic with a run button has proven to be a detriment, even when needing precision. Sonic shouldn't normally have the boost from boost games. He should run normally, but after a few seconds, maybe two to three, he reaches top speed like an adventure. This can be more than enough to traverse the big world, though I feel the most important aspect of open world is how the player interacts with it like I said, and I think in Sonic's case that's still true, but unlike most open worlds, Sonic should be best experienced at high speeds, not leisurely strolls like in Breath of the Wild. While running far and wide, traveling across mountains and forests, the beauty of the world should always be in sight, from daytime to nighttime, from above water and beneath the water too. Yes, underwater should be there too with Sonic holding his breath and using air bubbles when possible. But when exploring the environment, say near the entrances to towns or the back ends of caves or even beneath the water, you can find sparkling items, maybe a signpost or a boulder or anything like that, but they sparkle and interacting with it will take you to special stages and they are made in a variety of different ways. They can be structured like the 2D segments from Colors, Unleashed and Generations, lasting for two to three minutes like a traditional 2D Sonic game, or they can be like the 3D levels of Unleashed and Generations lasting two to three minutes as well. That way they kind of give us the best of all kinds of worlds of Sonic. If you really wanted say a new kind of boost game or you wanted a new kind of 2D game, things like that, you can even add aspects of adventure to some of the special stages as well. I think this would really please everyone. This is a way to make them as similar as shrines in Breath of the Wild as possible, but in a perfect way that's a callback to Sonic's past. There shouldn't be over a hundred of these things in the game, maybe around 10, 20, maybe even 30 of them in the whole game. I still kind of feel 30 is kind of excessive, but I still think 10 to 20 of them is pretty balanced. And I think that that way they can be replayed by either going to the now different colored sparkle, which would show that it's been cleared, or accessing it from the main menu, which in itself can be a type of gadget Tails gives Sonic, which would give the main menu more kind of personality and be less basic. Say when you press start, it shows Sonic looking at some kind of device that he was given to, um, by Tails at the very beginning of the game. I think something like that would be pretty cool. I guess that's kind of copying, you know, the Sheikah Slate. But again, it's not the Breath of the Wild isn't the first game to do something like this. So I'm not too worried about that kind of thing. I think it would give it more personality and make sense for the characters. 
I think the open world idea that worries a lot of people is not being able to take advantage of Sonic's speed, but building the world itself to take advantage of Sonic's physics based speed is key. Sonic goes faster down slopes. He can build it up going through natural loops in the environment like in Green Hill. Going up mountains may slow down his acceleration and things like that. That way you actually design this world to be explored by Sonic. Don't make these generic worlds like Link could traverse through Skyrim's world. That kind of thing is what I mean. So this kind of world can only really be explored by Sonic and that's how you fully take advantage of this. But speed means nothing without having a reason for going fast. Before it was used to beat levels faster or use it to access new areas of the levels and things like that. And since with open world and you're not really beating traditional levels, there needs to be a new reason to have Sonic be fast. And that can be exploration. Sonic moves fast around this big world as I said, but the reason he goes fast is to reach all different parts of this planet and new areas of the map. Think different areas or segments of the map like Breath of the Wild. Uh, they're labeled as zones in this game, just like, you know, traditional zones, but they translate into new areas of the map this time. So this entire portion of this world map right here is actually based off, say, Press Garden Zone. So when you go there, it actually looks like Press Garden Zone, but, you know, actually in 3D this time and fully done for an actual, say, town or city or something or this whole other environment. It actually makes sense it'd be really cool there'd obviously be new zones too but i use press garden as an example just because we've never seen press garden you know in a 3d space so seeing some of the 2d zones that we've never seen anywhere else in a 3d space if they gotta reuse old zones i'd prefer them to be places we haven't actually seen in 3d i think i'd like green hill as well just because we've never seen green hill in open world like this we haven't seen any in open world but i think seeing green hill in a 3d game like this would be kind of an obvious choice and I really think they will do it. But if they don't, that's not a big deal either. As long as there's some kind of loops and everything like that in the actual world itself, I don't think I'd really care. But I think having around eight to 10 zones in this game is a really good balance since designing big areas like this around one theme could become too much or too little if there's either too little or too many zones in the game. But say the reason you need to make your way through Press Garden is that this entire zone was taken over by the new threat of this game, and you have to go all across the zone freeing people from being enslaved or stopping crime from happening over there and having a showdown with the commander who rules over this zone appointed by the main villain, and they act as the boss of this zone. Overall, being within a zone needs to have purpose, but it needs to not go against what Sonic does best, and that's going fast. The Sonic TV shows do a good job of constantly showing how fast Sonic can go, but they also have him explore these worlds and towns and these environments with people and stuff, you know, especially when he was a freedom fighter or even when he's just being the world's fastest bum, but he still saves people and goes fast while doing it. And I think this is a perfect way to translate open world for a Sonic game. This philosophy is the core of how the main story should progress. Speed is the answer for that. Now, I've talked a lot about speed here and how to take advantage of it. The world needs to be big, but even more so, let's be real here, even if traversing the world is fun, whether it's speeding through loops, running across lakes and more, every open world game needs fast travel. It's just the truth, it's super convenient, no matter how much I have fun, say swinging through Spider-Man PS4 or anything like that, I'm still gonna use the fast travel every now and then. Again, I truly do think that if exploring the world is fun enough, I won't really feel the need to use it because I don't use it every now and then. You know, I don't really use it too much in Spider-Man PS4, but I do use it every now and then. But the fact that I can use it every now and then is probably what really helps me out. And I may just be somebody who doesn't use it. There may be tons of people who do use the fast travel. You know, they just want to get in, get out, do what they want to do. You know, even if swinging is fun. And the same thing needs to be done for Sonic. Even though speeding across lakes and all this stuff is fun, Sometimes they want to get where they need to go, especially if it requires them to go back and forth and say for quests and things like that. Every open world game just needs fast travel, even if you don't, you know, you don't have to use it as long as it's included in the game. Let's say, for example, you call Tails up using the gadget menu and everything like that, that um, I talked about before the little gadget say Tails gives you at the very beginning of the game. Uh, you end up using that gadget to call Tails and he'll come and pick you up and then you'll have to select on the map 
where you want to go to and then you select the location and then he drops you off the place and i think the most important places for this especially since it's something really specific like fast travel i think it should be something like towns i think fast traveling to towns specifically is the most important thing because they're a little bit more farther and you know between each other and things like that they're not always going to be hugged up against each other but even though they're spread out say i need to go somewhere but it's still kind of far out from the city i'm obviously going to teleport to the nearest city to it and then run and explore my way to find where i need to go that's how i can use the fast travel and not say i'm on the other side of the freaking planet and then i actually have to run all the way to the other side of the planet and find this one little place for a quest that i actually need things like fast travel would really help when i'm trying to do those little side quests things like that it streamlines it it's not necessarily needed i could go out of my way and run across the world but the fact that it's streamlining this really does mean a lot and again, when running across the world, like I said before, I think the top speed should only take a few seconds to really achieve because when you're really going across a world, how Sonic actually goes and does this is really important. And even if you do reach the same speed, uh, the real reason I think it should take only like three seconds is because if it takes like 10, 20 seconds to reach top speed, that's going to be really dumb. And I don't think that's a good way to balance out, you know, me constantly needing to start and stop or something like that or if i get into an encounter you don't really want to break the pace it should be quick and easy to go top speed that's how it should go and i think even though it's easy to get to top speed i still think that's consistent running say if i'm in a town i need to be precise and run up to somebody and talk to the npc that's kind of why i mean it needs to be have precision but still not take too long to actually initiate i think within these towns though there should be shops and rest areas where you can buy food with the new currency mobius emeralds which can connect to the lore saying long ago they were created from the chaos emeralds power nobody knows the true origin of them but they're plentiful and used as currency now but food helps give benefits like losing less rings when getting hit by enemies or even outright preventing it some foods may bring you back to life once hp should be used in the way of dying when you run out of rings at first i wanted rings to be the currency because that just makes the most sense but if we think about what determines a death in the game it's usually losing rings because this is how it is for a lot of the games so losing rings by getting hit even if it's the least threatening enemy in the whole game alongside those rings being your currency i just think it's too harsh of a punishment for a simple mistake losing what kind of game has you lose lose money just by getting hit i guess from a death in mario odyssey you lose money too but i still think that's not per hit that's per a death so i think losing money every time you get hit is way too harsh if it was losing money every time you died that make more sense but i still think there should all right be out completely different currency and just leave rings to be your actual hp that way you don't have to really conflict the two it just makes the most sense to me and it's consistent with what they've done in the past open world bosses can also be approached in multiple different ways since old design philosophies would make this fight stale combat has never been a primary focus of the mainline sonic games and it should never be it's just something that does happen which is why in fights in the overworld they should actually be quick go in go out and done same goes for overworld boss fights they need to be fast and not distract from exploration three phases that change each hit say for example you hit the weak point then he gets a shield over his weak point now now you have to find on him generating the shield you have to take out that little thing that's generating the shield and then hit him the second time then say the third time he gets super fast and you'll have to actually trip him so he'll fall and leave his weak point exposed that way we can finish him off it should be designed this way that way they're not literal jokes but they can also be approached in different ways and they're not all out pace breakers this whole process should only take you say 30 seconds or something even then i feel like it could be long but i feel depending on how you actually approach the fight it could be even faster especially with what i'm going to be bringing up in a moment 
Cosmetics that change abilities would be a must have in this game. Things such as fire spin dashes or a spin dash that grounds enemies or a bounce that slows down upon the bounce, you know, and it, your descent is actually slower and it lets you use it for platforming around the world. I think knuckles gloves that let you be able to dig for treasure in the ground, that would be super, super cool. It's important for things like this to be introduced in ways to where you see indications from them early on, but you're not too sure how to interact with it. So it'll stick in your head when you actually go and just move on, but when you get access to those cosmetics by buying them in the store or finding them around the world or taking them from enemies. You experiment and try them out on new discoveries. I see that dirt patch over there. It looks kind of suspicious, but I just got these knuckles gloves. So let me equip these and try them out. Oh crap, that worked. I just got a ton of Mobius emeralds or I just found a new cosmetic or oh, a power up I've never used. This kinds of whimsicality will have you blazing across the world to find even more goodies. This can also be working in that whole, you know, core Korok seed type of thing that they said from the leak that they kind of copy. I think something like this would work, say, if there's an NPC you meet in the story that tells you to come back when you say you met this kind of person. Let's say the, the more of these things, these little Korok seed things that you find in the world, they actually end up, if you bring them back to this guy, he'll actually let you be able to equip more accessories. I think that would have to be limited though, because you'd be too broken having too many abilities on, but say he may augment what kind of ability you have on say knuckles glove um, also makes you dig up more um, treasures this time instead of just one or say you have a fire spin dash but the fire spin dash does more damage or anything like that or any any of those things I think something like that along those lines would be kind of cool um, but alongside this, I think different accessories should change how Sonic's fights. That I think that would be super, super cool. And I know that I said combat shouldn't be a focus because it's never really a focus. And that I think it's something that happens when it's exploring, but it's not something that should be destroying the pace. But I think making it to where the combat that is in the game is flashy can be varied. And that's an important way of giving the player their own preferred way of approaching encounters. Accessories that give Sonic's kicks and spin dashes and homing attacks different properties like elemental charges. However, say beating water-based baddies with electrical charged uh, spin dashes or homing attacks would be more effective. Doing it in water itself could make the electrical attack spread to other nearby foes too. I think that'd be a really cool concept. Also, we can have super fast homing attacks, say for example. As it sounds, it hits even faster than a normal homing attack. Think slightly faster than SA2s, for example. However, though, it can really make getting quick attacks in on enemies. It comes with a downside to balance it, though, that being less damage to its target. And then when you actually have it equipped, it'll switch to the Sonic Heroes type health bar for the enemies, and they'll have like two or three HP. So you gotta quickly hit him one, two, three. But say not everything will go that way. Say sometimes an enemy, if you hit them twice, when they have three HP, they'll kind of knock you away. So you can't immediately just spam it and keep going. You know, I think there needs to be a downside for it because again, it's not really much of a downside to add HP if the homing attack is so fast. It doesn't really matter if you have to hit them once or three times because he's dead in a second anyway. So I think that's another balance that I think I would add to that kind of um, accessory. Um, on another note, I think weapons should be attempted again. Something like hammers or swords specifically. Hammers are slower than a sword, but you can still defeat enemies with it. But however, it's not so slow to where it's like Amy from 06. But despite being slower than the sword, it does even more damage to enemies. However, using it over a sword comes with benefits like breaking open block passageways or using it to knock things into place for puzzles, though ideally it can't be used simultaneously while running. Then say swords, for example, can be used to attack enemies even quicker than a hammer. You're able to use it while traversing the world at high speeds. Say Sonic is at top speed and he has the sword equipped. He can swing the sword normally or even spin it like 360 degrees and it can take out all tall grass nearby and maybe you'll find Mobius emeralds within it, which can be used as currency in towns and shops. I think it can be used for puzzles around the overworld and in zones to where say there's obviously a path over to your right. However, it's blocked off by a giant steel door. Attacking it doesn't work either. But nearby, there's a small island within a pond, and it has a stone at the center. If you actually go and store the sword into the stone, it opens the door and it leads to goodies and a special stage. I want different methods of combating foes, but I don't want any method to outweigh another, because at any point, why not just use the homing attack? 
All options need downsides and benefits, but none of them should greatly outweigh each other. There needs to be a reason to use everything. This includes those incentives being for more than just combat. Having functionality across the world is more than enough reason to keep them on hand or buy and search for new ones. Though I think limiting weapons to just kinds of hammers and, and swords would be for the best. I considered guns too, but maybe for another video. That was most of the ideas I had, however there is one I did have that I didn't mention. Honestly, when I was talking with somebody about it, I was talking with my brother about it with the concept, um, I don't know why I didn't write it down, I could have sworn I had wrote it down, but I started thinking back on it and I feel like I'm not too sure how I would implement it unlike a lot of the other things. I think there is a way to add the boost to the game, but not make it the same kind of boost that would happen when you have say the boost games itself. I think if you had some kind of power up or a food or accessory that lets you say for 10 seconds, it lets you boost like you would in those games. It lets me traverse faster. I can use it as say a replacement for the hammer. Say I don't have a hammer yet or something like that. And I have this food item. It lets me boost so fast. I break through this, you know, this rubble that leads to a hidden area, that, that kind of thing. I think things like that would be pretty cool. Or I can use it when I see a loop coming up ahead and I want to gain even more speed or say this loop will lead to a giant cliff that I just get to soar through the sky and after I run off of I think having a boost ahead of time would let you even go even further because I'm boosting but even after even though it only lasts you know say 10 seconds there needs to be some kind of cooldown say if it is an item even if you have say 10 of these things you can only use it say once every few minutes or something like that this would make it to where obviously you can't spam it you can't break the game in any sort of way and it would be pretty inconvenient to try to do so i think this is a good way to do it it doesn't necessarily have to be a food item it could be an accessory that lets you do this say once every 120 seconds or something like that kind of like what you see in mmos some really big abilities or really important stuff like that it'll you know, have a two minute cooldown and things like that i think something like that would really work for this kind of case because i think a boost that lets you go even faster in a world as big as this it's never really a bad thing. But again, I think a boost needs to be handled in a way that it doesn't break the game, but it still gives us exactly what we want out of a Sonic game, and that's speed. We have the adventure type feeling, we have the speed of the boost games, and overall, a brand new concept for an open world Sonic game. What do you guys think? Do you guys like all the things that I said? I generally think I put my foot in this one. I, I, I really did like a lot of the ideas I came up with. It's so much so to where I can actually foresee something like this happening. And all of these things, when I was carefully writing this stuff down, all of these things take into consideration what Sonic has been able to do in the past, you know, what we've seen, even if it's in cutscenes, things like that all play a part into how this game is going to be made. And I truly think that all of these pay homage to series past and you know, yet without disrespecting them. And I really think it came out well. Let me know what you guys think. Are you guys more open to an open world Sonic game now after this video? Even if you don't prefer it, do you still feel that if they followed these kind of philosophies, it could come out well? I didn't use all the ideas that I came up with, um, but I think these ones were some of the best ones. Maybe I'll make another video um, about this if you guys would want something like that. But I think these ideas are fine for now. But let me know how I did in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, uh, hit the like button for me and subscribe and share this out with another Sonic fan. I'd really appreciate that. We hit 11K and I really appreciate that. I'm glad we were able to hit it right before E3, which technically starts tomorrow. So we didn't end up doing it. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching. This video is long enough as it is. Um, my name is Kingdom Ace, and remember my warriors of courage to stay strong, stay beautiful, and always look skyward.